Hey guys, welcome back to the MLG Game On 16 Man Invitational. I am Destiny. I just casted a game with Cats, and you will notice that there is someone else sitting next to me right now. I would like to introduce Greg Andrew Fields. Greg Andrew Fields. I said I was going to introduce you, and then I made you say that. Was yeah, I mean, uh, that wasn't really an introduction. It was like, here you are. I would like to allow him to introduce himself. We are going to be watching Puck versus Cats. And then Cats gets to play right after casting. That spectacularly exciting swarm host game. And then a 14-14 on Daedalus Point. So I'm sure he has plenty of... Actually, the 14-14 looked like a Cats game. So I'm sure he's... You would, what do you mean by that? warmed up. That, it looks like a Cats game. It looks like something Cats would do. You don't you don't think 14-14 on that map is kind of common? Oh, it's really good. It's fantastic. But it, it still looks like a Cats thing. I can't believe Huck... <laughs> pick that map without expecting something like that. I mean, yeah. Kane... Especially from Kane. Because yeah. it's Kane. It's not like it was like some super standard... I don't, I don't yeah. know. Kane, Kane, Kane can be is one of the more diverse Zergs yeah. on the North American ladder. And he like had his basis as a very, very cheesy player. He, he's developed into much more of a macro player over time. Sure. But when he first came out, he was nothing but Roach all -ins Definitely. And, and the like. So I was actually super that. critical when Root picked him up because I have a. I mean, I'm sure he has a bad history with most people on the ladder, right? Because yeah, <laughs> yeah, his early days on he's the ladder. He's not the nicest were, guy. Yeah, he definitely wasn't the nicest guy. Cheesy, laddery, you know, typical shenaniganery that you would expect to see from somebody like that. So yeah, it was pretty surprising, but. Yeah. Huck really likes the stalker aggression, but that's not not the map for it at all. Unless he had scouted that there was no gas, in which case it could have been okay. Yeah. But the lack of that scout there killed him early on. And now we get Puck versus Cats. I haven't actually seen Cats play. Is he still doing like the Queen Swarm Host Infestor contain stuff? Um, I mean it's Cats, so I would you never really know automatically what assume it. yeah. <laughs> that sounds about right for him. Sure. I think that um whenever somebody asks him what he thinks about a counter to a certain unit, his go to is usually always Queen Infestor, so I'm guessing that it's probably gonna be some pretty weird off the wall shit. So like, and his Puck play against Puck is a former teammate, so he yeah. should know that there's some what weird stuff coming do. up. And Puck is historically, I don't want to say a cheesy player, but really big on like two or three base timing attacks. He really likes to make a lot of stalkers. Yeah. The, he, <laughs> a lot of stalkers. When you play Puck, there's two different things that are going to happen. There's going to be a really, really tech-heavy two base all-in, like four gases like before the six-minute mark. And then usually not DTs, but some combination of Robo and Stargate units. Or he's going to take a really early third, buy a lot of time with a Warp Prism, and then move out with a three base death ball. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be one of those two things, more likely than not. And then cats, who knows? No one knows. No one knows. No one knows. Sometimes I don't even think cats knows. He says he goes into every game with an open mind. So. Yeah, that, that makes it harder to predict what he's going to do because <laughs> yeah. he doesn't know. So how are you going to make any kind of read on that? The um, the the scariest swordsman isn't the trained one, but the drunken. <laughs> there's like there's some saying like that. I don't remember. But... Uh, I'm sure that was Sun Tzu or whatever. Yeah. Sure. All right, we're jumping into game one. It's going to be cats versus puck on heavy rain. These these new maps. Pretty interesting. This is one of the ones that I vetoed almost right away. Um, I'm not really sure how it plays for ZVP. I played one ZVT on it and was like, nope, no more. <laughs> so, the, not um, sure what to expect here. Any map where you have these cliffs around can be pretty brutal for the ZVTs, I guess. Or even for the And planes. that little central lane, like that, that's the absolutely death perfect lane. for Marine Train. Just sure. You're never engaging that, and they get to your base in like two seconds. Sure. And they control three expansions from the center of the map. It's can lead fun. to um, maps like these uh, usually open themselves up to pretty interesting strategies because if you do try to just play conventionally, um, it can get really annoying really fast. Yeah. It's not as unconventional as state list though. At least you can take an expansion on here. Sure. So it won't be that bad for Puck. Puck actually opening up with a pile on his base. He's one of the few players who still really prefers Forge FE over Gateway expansion usually. Sure. And the um, the pylon in the base um, might seem weird, but you can correct me if I'm wrong. I think the primary purpose of that pylon is that if you do a forge fast expand and they do some kind of crazy early pressure, you can throw a cannon down in your mineral field. You can, yeah. Um, it it can also of... just be greedier. You save a little bit of mining time sending it out. So you'll get two options. Sometimes you'll get... I think he's actually dropping a gateway, though, it looks like. Yep. So he is just going gateway expansion. But yeah, with that forge FE, sometimes you'll get people who just drop a forge immediately in their main, and that allows you to cannon rush a little bit more deceptively mm -hmm. or be a little bit safer. Or they'll just drop a nexus and they save the mining time and play super, super greedy. Definitely. Um, it's going to be a gateway expansion here, so that opens him up. I really haven't seen Puck play gateway expansion very much at all, um, but it is it is becoming the most accepted PVC opening. Just the amount of pressure you can apply with those early warp gate timings or very early tech. It's just you, you can't really definitely. It can be hard. That. It's it's easy to defend, but it's hard to defend correctly, because 
anybody could defend it if you just had to mass Roach Ling. But if yeah. you overcommit to the defense and they only warped in like six zealots and then you're sitting on, you know, 20 Lings and three Roaches, then you're in trouble for a mid game timing push. Um, or, you know, you don't know if a three gate's going to be a four gate. So maybe you'll make enough. Maybe you'll pull a Scarlet versus an Anyone. You'll make enough Lings to stop a three gate. But then there's actually four gate Zealots and all of a sudden you don't have enough. So the, the early gateway pressure is definitely something that can be very hard to deal with as a Zerg player. Yeah, Protoss players who are really, really smart about it. Sam actually comes to mind. He Something about it, he just knows exactly how many Zealots to make, exactly how much pressure to apply. And he can make it really, really intimidating without investing too much. And he's just very good at the mind games involved in that. Because it's not as simple as just, I'm going to make a bunch of Zealots and I'm going to attack you. Because mm -hmm. if you do that, and Zerg opened up with Speedling and just makes Slings constantly, or got to Roaches or something like that, then you just lose all the Zealots and that's a lost investment. The key to it is applying just enough pressure and then pulling back at just the right time give yourself a big advantage and then your two base immortal all in or whatever you choose to do will be literally unstoppable definitely and cast is actually opening up without a gas without any kind of speed link here so if and puck is still only on the one gas so if he actually just does a four gaze out here he might just flat out win possibly but cats is playing a i'm guessing this is a two base opener because he is grabbing queens and everything before even trying to get that third down so I wouldn't be surprised to see... I wonder if he'll throw down all four gases at around 40 supply, or if he's going to take two gases soon, or... This is a pretty... I think this is a pretty strange Zerg opening for CVP to not have the fast third to get the queens now and not have even a single gas up yet. Yeah, you can go double gas. He needs to go double gas within, like, the next 15 seconds if he wants to have any chance to survive. Otherwise, he's going to have to just make a ton of... Spines he is making the additional queens, so I guess he's just throwing really queen-heavy. But sure. he'll need spine crawlers as well. Although Puck has put down the second gas, so it's not going to be a four gateway could still become some kind of pretty early pressure but yeah definitely yeah, a kind of non-standard opening from cats but two gas yeah, is going down for cats now which is goodish yeah this is this is a pretty okay timing this is it's just kind of a very mineral heavy opening where you say i'm not going to get a third base but i'm going to compensate for it by having a lot of drones on minerals early on delay my tech a little bit and then you kind of explode into the mid game you take a third base you make all your tech and everything definitely. at the same time it's a bit safer against some builds. That's probably what he's opting for here, given that he's making a spine crawler as well. Mm -hmm. He was worried about some kind of early aggression. He didn't want to have to play that game we were talking about where you try and judge how many units to make. He's just, sure. just going to sit on two bases and play a bit safer. Depending on the Protoss opens, too, it's also really easy um, because you talk about exploding up to the mid game. When you do those really fast three base openers, Zergus has to play, I, I think, kind of a really scary up until you actually get that third. At least eight drones on you, at least mm -hmm. something on that third. Um, so by opening up with a two base heavy drone style and just droning them all up immediately, when you go to take that third, if you want to make some roaches or links, or if you have to hold off some pressure, or if you want to apply some pressure, I think it opens up a little bit more options there for you, too. Rather than having that third hatchery there kind of just sitting there, you feel you have to saturate regardless of what's going on. Yeah. And so, three Stalkers are out, and there is a forward pylon, plus a Stargate producing Phoenix back at home, so Puck is kind of just doing a little bit of everything. Three gateways, so the possibility to apply pressure is there, but it's not going to be super hard pressure, Maybe. especially with three Stalkers instead of some Zealots. Sure. He doesn't have the gases at his natural, though, um, although he is still producing probes. Yeah, it's definitely not an all-in, but it could very well be just Phoenix plus warp gate pressure. That is what it seems to be. Against lots of Queens, that's not the best, but mm -hmm. with... Like, queens do need some support with them, and Cass actually isn't making any units at all. More drones single on spine the crawler and three queens out in front. Uh, he, he, he might just die here. He doesn't seem to be aware that any kind of pressure is coming. Possibly. He has the creep out. He is going to have two transfuses available, I think, by the time this hits. Uh, he just needs five more energy on that queen there. Um, which And spine crawlers are pretty scary against... Well, it's a spine it's crawler. A, so. I'm sorry, spine crawler. Mr. Spine crawler can be pretty scary against just a few units. Oh, and but he just. The mana. Oh, yeah. that's not good. He just burned the he, mana. He does have a lot of links coming out, though, now. He has an infestation pit as well. The one thing to note is that if this attack doesn't succeed from Puck, whatever it's going to be, if this pressure doesn't succeed, Ling and Fester it means he's not going to be able to take a third base forever if yeah. he doesn't do real damage here. We do have lifting. Uh, the links were a little bit late getting out there to defend the spine crawler. We did lift a few queens. He's going to have Speedling in a second. He has lots of Zerglings in production. And there's not a whole lot of production from Puck. This is not like a six gateway. This yeah. is three gateways. So this should be a pretty easy hold for Cats. Trying to get that Mothership Core. Not able to do it. He really wants to kill it, though. I know. I can feel he really wants to kill it. We do have another three Zealots coming in. 20 Lings on the way. He will get that Mothership Core if he focuses it down with the Queen. Nice job. That means those units are stuck here. He can't recall out. But at this point, it doesn't look like he really wants to. He's, the Zealots are strong enough, even without upgrades off three gateways kind of just holding off the Zerglings on their own. Sure. Lings are coming out, though. There are is no plus one for the Zealots. I do think Cats will be able to hold this off. And this is still a pretty good hold for him. He hasn't lost anything important. He's just trading Lings for units. Sure. And 
yeah, three more three zealots at a time is not going to be enough to break this at this point. And we have a knight is coming, so I think he is actually going to set up maybe a swarm host. Did he get the fungal upgrade, the pathogen glands? Um, he. Oh, can, can we you not, tell? Can we not check? I don't know. I'm not familiar enough with game heart. Uh, I think we would have seen. I'm it not sure if he's going infester or swarm host, but with that knight is set up, and on a map with a pretty hard to defend third base like this. Oh. And he's actually pairing up. Puck continues to warp in. It's kind yeah. of weird. He's kind of just trying to maintain a presence there, so Cats feels a little bit nervous. And, and so that he can take the third safely. Yeah. yeah, but that's a bit of a risk, because if he loses all those units out there, mm -hmm. uh, Cats pops up a Nidus, it just sends all his stuff down in front of him. Cat, Puck is going to get contained off two bases, and it is Swarm Host. Five Swarm Hosts on the way that are going to be Nidus in. So typically, and Infestors, typically when you get the Swarm Host, you really want to get that upgrade to make the uh, Swarm Host stick around longer. But... I mean, one way to kind of circumvent that is if you have a Nidus sitting in the base, they don't have to stay alive that long to do a lot of damage. If you're able to get someone else right in front of your enemy like that. So it'll be interesting to see if Katz is going to try. He doesn't really have... Um, he doesn't really have any vision. Oh, he's oh, he's just going to set up right outside the uh, entrance. Um, and he, there's no units at all for Puck. He's not going to be able to really contest this at all. There's just does have a robotics facility to grab an observer, though, at least. But, yeah, this is going to be pretty tough. There's, what, five, six swarm hosts, five queens, a oh, few man. investors, quite a few zerg things. Yeah. I, not enough Not enough phoenix, I don't think, to really bust through that many queens and start lifting. No, and he could get fungled and just lose all his units here. And that's that's the oh, standing no. army for Puck. What? What is Cats doing? Cats just lost that was three infestors for free. That was pretty bad. However, we do have a lot going on at the front of this base. The uh, Swarm Hosts were able to get in. It looks like Puck just tried to punch in. I thought Cats was just going to go set up a uh, contain, but with the units moving into his natural, he's actually just going to be able to go probably for the kill. Because I know wonder he kills off five Swarm Hosts without if he'll an be able army. To get that. Puck is just going <laughs> to GG out? What? I. I there was, um, I mean, at the third, he had the queens here, too. As silly as that looks, that's pretty legitimate, because three warp gate units are not going to bust the natural of cats. Sure. And how is he going to deal with five swarm hosts? I would, with, the, with my only had. hope, I guess, would have been with the queens being separated, maybe he could use the phoenix here to lift him off, because the queens were all the way at the third. But, I mean, he would have yeah, taken a lot of damage. And he would have lost a lot of probes. He had five phoenix, there were five swarm, five swarm hosts. It would have taken a long them. time, yeah. yeah. So, I, I mean, it, it, even if Puck would have survived there, that would have been a really rough spot. Um, for him to be in, and he would have been playing on the back foot all game. And you don't want to play behind with someone that's already going Swarm Host. No, no. <laughs> it's not a fun... It's, it's bad enough when you're in an equal situation yeah. trying to... Although it wasn't high econ Swarm Host, it wasn't split map Swarm Host, it was aggressive I, I Swarm mean, Host. I don't know, I think any Swarm Host are pretty yeah. annoying to deal with. When you've already got Especially five Swarm Hosts, like eight minutes, nine and minutes... And it's going to be set game. up outside of your natural. Yeah, it's not... With two already down. Yeah, you're, you're already setting yourself up for a not fun game. I, you know, I would almost leave that game just because I don't want to go through the mental anguish of my first game being dealing with early Swarm Host, so... That, that was a pretty rough game from Puck. Really um, interesting build from Cats there. I mean, he kind of just... Interesting builds on both sides. I'm not sure what that was supposed to be by Puck. Like, that's the kind of thing that often punishes a third base, because it's hard to have enough units sure. and spore crawlers and the everything three to, defend, are to really defend both the air and the ground. But mm -hmm. two bases, there's just not that much that's really exposed to your harassment, and it's not enough to do a full-on attack. Like, I don't know. He, he just There wasn't really an opportunity to break through there. He was just trying to maintain a little bit of map presence while taking a third base, but Katz is more than willing to go all in at any given moment. Puck's well aware of that, so it sure. seems like an odd risk to take. Yeah. Um, you, uh, it's really difficult to play against Katz um, as a Protoss, because so many of your builds as Protoss against Zerg rely on damaging like Zerg habits, you know, like stalling the third and whatnot. But if yeah. you're playing against somebody that doesn't give a fuck whether or not they have a third... <laughs> It becomes a lot more interesting. Because it's not like, only that, doesn't have any of the Zerg habits. He yeah, has, yeah. He is his own thing. Yeah, he's, so he's not a Zerg player. He's cats. Yeah. Um, to mention really quickly, um, we do have an error on the overlay. Uh, Puck's new Twitter account is actually Puck SC2. Um, if you really want to follow him, that's the uh, Twitter you're looking for, not the other Twitter.